Mike Hill. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, uh, and it's an honour to follow on from the member for Fairham. Um, <coughs> and listening to, to speakers earlier on, uh, I appreciate this is a very sensible debate. Um, two issues that are dear to my heart, mental health uh, and um, elderly care uh, have been discussed in, in a positive light and I, and I welcome uh, the Green Paper going forward on that, particularly in the area of dementia, dementia care, which I consider to be a ticking time bomb uh, and something that we really have to grasp because it's about all our futures uh, and the funding simply is not there yet to to uh, cope with that in a meaningful and measured way. I'm saying that, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm here to talk about Hartlepool, which, uh, like many seaside towns, has been left behind. There is a desperate need to improve housing and transport, as well as business, growth and job opportunities. And, unfortunately, we have some of the most deprived wards in the country, low life expectancy, fuel and fuel and food poverty, no less than nine food banks, and until recently we topped the national tables on the number of unemployed adults. Following a year-long investigation into our coastal communities, a House of Lords Select Committee concluded only recently that places like Hartlepool have been neglected for far too long. With money from successive governments, being directed towards big towns and cities at their expense. And quite rightly, the Lord's report points to the negative effect this has had on the economy of our once thriving seaside towns and on the health, well-being and prospects of their people. The Lord's also concluded that with the, with the right investment, towns like Hartlepool can be rejuvenated and once again become prosperous and desirable places to live and work. Madam Deputy Speaker, I cannot agree more with the Select Committee's findings and recommendations and will be pressing the Government to act upon them, but I have to put on record that far from being the run-down, crime-ridden backwater as portrayed on the Channel 4 programme Skint Britain, it is a vibrant and welcoming place and a place where people choose to move to, despite the negative statistics and a negative portrayal of the town by some. Yeah, yeah. But like other coastal communities, despite their best efforts, the local Labour Council is struggling to maintain services. In 2019-2020, it faces 40% cuts across all departments and has, for the first time, been forced to use its reserves in order to balance the books and avoid job losses. Madam Deputy Speaker, let me, let me be frank. The continued underfunding of councils like my own, the insistence that the majority of those settlements are ring-fenced to children's and social care, and the removal of the deprivation factor in calculating government grant funding to areas with high levels of deprivation, like Hartlepool, is driving them off a fiscal cliff. Services are at breaking point because of the constant cuts and austerity agenda. Typical of places like ours, our elderly population is growing with all the demands that that brings from a public health and social care perspective. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is also the case that our children's services are creaking at the seams, despite an award-winning children's services team and department. Council departments simply cannot cope with growing demands on social care and stretched budgets. In Hartlepool, the rate of looked after children is thankfully on the decline, but we have child poverty to cope with. We run holiday hunger schemes to keep our children from going hungry. We have schools desperately crying out for better funding to provide a good education in a safe and warm environment. We have no sure start centres and youth provision has virtually gone. Since 2010, local authority funding has been cut by £16 billion. That clearly has had a knock-on effect on services which my constituents expect and rely on. And it's not just services to the elderly and young people. It's highways, parks, refuse collection, trading standards, libraries, the police, 
fire services, all affected by chronic underfunding of local government. And the government practice of pushing the problem onto the council taxpayer and by default letting local councils take the blame is irresponsible. Madam Deputy Speaker, thanks to the efforts of our local Labour Council, many services have been kept going and a number of compulsory redundancies kept to a minimum. But at a time when the Lords clearly point to the need for greater investments, they are suffering death by a thousand cuts. Madam Deputy Speaker, it makes me angry that innovative thinking around social care in Hartlepool, like the creation of a care academy, like, the, like aspirations for a centre of excellence, like tackling respite care to free up beds in the, in the acute hospital wards, and like tackling dementia care to fill a gap in the market run and owned by the public sector when the private sector, such as residential housing owners now, are ready to jump into that gap because we're not prepared or ready to fund what is obvious and what is right under our nose. It makes me angry that innovative thinking like that, like providing care for our citizens in our, in our own communities, is not backed up by fair funding. A tax on council funding needs to stop, and fairer measures need to be introduced. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.